I want to discuss value at risk or VAR and then show you how you can compute it in Excel. So value at risk is a risk management approach that attempts to quantify potential losses. Now this is different from volatility like variance or standard deviation which treats gains the same as losses. You'll recall when you've calculated variance, what do you do? You look at the, the um, sum of the squared deviations. So values above the mean, say this is a return that's above the average, that's actually a good thing. It still gets incorporated into that volatility or that variance measure. Here we're just going to look at the losses. So what value at risk does is it looks at the risk of losing money. So what are the components of VAR? There's the time period, there's the confidence level, and there's the loss amount. So VAR answers a question like, what is the most I can, for example, with 95% level of confidence, expect to lose in percentage or dollar terms over the next month? So how do you calculate this? There are a couple of approaches. There's the historical method. What we do is we get actual data, we create a histogram, and we look at the distribution. So for example, here is the NASDAQ 100, and it's a distribution of daily returns. And you can see that there are some returns down here which are not very good, right? So what we're interested in is where's that 5% cutoff? So 95% of the values lie to the right. So that's our value at risk. We don't expect, we expect with 95% certainty not to lose more than let's say it happens to be 4%, we feel 95% certain that we're going to get a value that's no worse than minus 4%. Okay? And that's what the cutoff is. You can't really see the cutoff here. They're just showing you the worst 5% of values. The second approach is to use a Monte Carlo simulation. So here, rather than looking at actual returns, actual historical returns, we generate a model for future stock returns and we run a number of trials or replications to get a distribution. So the problem with the historical approach is that it assumes that the returns will follow, will be similar to what we've seen historically. Whereas if we use a Monte Carlo simulation, we can run this trial or these replications many, many times. So let's take a look here. I've got this spreadsheet here, and what I did is I downloaded um, stock price data for Amazon from Yahoo Finance. Now, I've done that to make this video shorter, and there are numerous videos, and I have some where I actually show you how to, how to do that. But you download it, you can pick the uh, time period, and you'll get things like the open, the close price, the high, the low. And so I've used the adjusted close price to calculate the return from month to month. The adjusted close adjusts for things like stock splits and um, stock dividends. So here we have data from five years of data from January of 2017 to December of 2021. And these are the returns for each month. And you can see they fluctuate quite a bit. Over here, I've simply sorted these returns. So these are not these do not correspond to the dates. These do, but these are just from lowest to highest. And if you were looking with, for example, 95% um, confidence, so you wanted to look at the worst 5% of outcomes. 5% of 60 would be, what, three values? So you'd be looking at roughly, you expect to get a return that is better than losing 8.76%. Now we can calculate that more precisely over here. Here I've calculated the mean, I've just used the functions in Excel average, I calculated the standard deviation. You should use dot S, S-T-D-E-V dot S, or just S-T-D-E-V, because it calculates the um, sample standard deviation. This is not a population. The difference is dividing by n or dividing by n minus 1. 
Um, I'm not sure it makes a huge difference dividing by 59 or dividing by 60, but this is the correct way to do it. I also use the functions in Excel to find the minimum and the maximum values. And you can see that there, there was one month that was quite bad, you know, minus 20%, and then one that was uh, terrific, almost up 27%. So here I've calculated the actual percentiles based on these numbers. And Excel has a function, percentile.inc. And what that does is it calculates the percentile based on the numbers and based on what percent you put in here. So here I put in the five, uh, the fifth percentile. So that means um, we expect 95% of the values to be above minus 7.91, which is pretty close to the minus 8.96 that we have here at um, the third observation. We said, you know, three observations would be 5% of the 60 months of data. And if we want to do 1%, it would be minus 9.76%. So we feel 99% certain that we're not going to lose more than 9.76% in one month. So that's the historical approach. So we actually have real data. A second approach we can do is using this Monte Carlo simulation approach and replicating the returns. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the mean and the standard deviation. We're going to assume a normal distribution here. And so I I could just run 60 replications since there's 60 months of data, but there's no reason why I can't run more than 60 months. Okay, in fact, I'm going to run a thousand replications. So I'm going to put one in here, and if you want to fill this to a thousand, um, one way to do that is to use right under the summation key. You see, maybe I don't know how well you can see it on the video. It's a little down arrow key, and it says series. This is a column. And the step value was one, and we're going to stop at a thousand. Okay. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see I have uh, a thousand um, replications here. So I could have done ten thousand. I could do a hundred thousand. I think a thousand is enough. So we want to randomly generate these returns. Again, we're going to assume that this is normally distributed. So we're going to put in this function called norm.inverse. And again, I don't know how well you can see it. Underneath it says probability, mean, and then standard deviation. The probability is putting in a value between 0 and 1, you know, 50%, 10%. We want this to be random, so we can put in this function rand open parenthesis, closed parenthesis, and that's going to keep changing between 0 and 1. So each time it's going to generate a different value. We put in the mean, and I'm also going to put in a, a dollar sign here because I'm going to copy this value down. And let me put in a comma so I can put in the standard deviation. And again, I'm going to put in a dollar sign, and I'm going to close this up here. And you see, I get a value. Well, let me make that a percentage. So up 8%. And actually, if I hit calculate now, it'll keep changing. Right? Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. All right. And what I want to do here is I want to copy this all the way down. And let me see where I go to. I go down to 1,004. So I want to copy this. I want to say equals. So I want to copy this value. Oh, I'll just copy it down. Sorry, there are better ways to do this, but I'll just copy it this way. And you can see I get all these different returns, and I hit Calculate Now. It keeps changing. So this goes to 1,004. So let me calculate the mean 
and the standard deviation and the min and the max. So let's see here. So we want to say average goes from K5 to K1004. And in fact, I'm going to do a little trick. I saw somebody do this was actually uh, quite clever, makes it a little faster here. I'm going to put a dollar sign here so these numbers don't change. And I'm going to copy this down, this formula down. Now this is still calculating the average, but now all I have to do is change this to the standard deviation function, stdev.s, and the min. and the max. And again, the numbers will keep changing. These don't change because these are based on historical numbers, but you can see they're, they're pretty similar in terms of the mean and the standard deviation, the minimum and the maximum, because we've run this replication so many times. And again, if I had run it 100,000 times, you'd probably get an even better and more accurate prediction. All right, so let's figure out the percentile. What's the cutoff here? Here we thought we feel that we're not going to lose more than 70, more than 7.91% with 95% confidence. So here I'm going to say and I'm going to use the .inc percentile.inc. It means it includes all the values. And I'm going to use this, and I can scroll all the way down by holding Control Shift down arrow key. And then I have to put in a comma, and I have to put in the confidence here. So again, I'm going to put in a dollar sign so that I can just copy it to the next uh, cell below. And here, I'm going to put in. 5% and hit enter. So here we feel 95% confident that we're not going to lose more than 10.34%. Let me copy this down. And here it's 15% at the 1% level. Now that's bigger than this, but again, as you keep doing these replications, they change because, you know, these are randomly generated. Here you have these historical numbers, but, you know, we know that you're not going to get exactly these returns in the next 60 months. So here we're able to generate, assuming that it is a normally distributed, uh, a normal distribution for these returns. You can see that these are um, the, we feel 95% confident that we're not going to lose more than 10.97%. Okay, in that case, here it's 10.8 minus 10.8. 9.96. So again, keeps changing, but again, here we're actually using generating these returns rather than looking at the historical. So this is the Monte Carlo approach, and this is the historical approach where we use the actual data.